All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, in 2008, Nigeria started a, uh, made starting a business easier by introducing an online system for company name search and increasing efficiency at the company registration. Now, in Kano, um, starting a business was made easier by no longer requiring on-site inspection for business premises registration. 2017 saw improvement um, online government portals to ease company registration, while in 2018, starting a business became faster by allowing electronic stamping of registration documents still applying to Lagos and Kano. In 2019 and 2020, Nigeria made starting a business easier by reducing the time needed to register a company at the Corporate Affairs Commission and introducing an online platform to pay stamp duties. Nigeria is 131 out of 188 in the ease of doing business ranking with country risk rating at C, the, an index of economic uh, freedom 57.3 according to the world ranking. Now, how easy is it to do business in Nigeria with this kind of ranking? Now, to join this conversation, tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways to Africa One with the hashtag Ways or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 um, So, ladies, uh, when I saw the ranking, interestingly, my current, uh, <laughs> my last uh, assignment I just submitted was actually um, tied to the ease of doing business. So that's where I got some of these um, um, figures from. And in the UK, I think UK is uh, UK has um, a, a rating at A3, at about 70, 79 or something point uh, something percent. While we are at C, I said, okay, C is not that bad. I was thinking maybe we'll be at like maybe D or something. But but um, you you run um, businesses that require, especially for you, you you head SME desk, and you know how easy is it for for us to say, you know what, we want to build a business in Nigeria. Well, over, um, just take it that it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> First and foremost, so I upload all the platforms, all the things that you're seeing mm. there through. Um, it's a platform there, it's there. Mm -hmm. But are they working as they should work? Or is the implementation of all these things that we're reading out, is it real to the SME on the streets? Mm -hmm. From the last statistics that we have, about 93% of SMEs are not registered. And why is that? Mm -hmm. And then if That's they're a not. a high percentage. Exactly. And it's really on the micro side. And the micro businesses are the ones that are. 99% of all the businesses in this country. Mm. So if they're not registered, they're looking at things like even access to finance, it become, becomes a problem. Okay, because first and foremost, if you want to not to get 30,000 and 50,000, if you want to- <laughs> You have to register it properly. If you want to get real money, money, you have to register it. And then again, we'll go on to the issue of KYC, like know, knowing the businesses. Mm -hmm. The people that are ready to learn to these businesses, do they really know them? Check. You know, do they really know them? Are there infrastructures that will even help the lenders mm -hmm. make that decision mm -hmm. to be able to say, okay, I can take the decision to lend to them? Then you look at the ease of international trade. You look at things like payments. Mm -hmm. You know, those things are things that are very real to SMEs every day. When you talk about this Forex issue now, how is it affecting um, the girl on Instagram? Mm -hmm buying her goods, um, import, importing her goods from, let's yeah. say, China or the UK or the US. And those are the people keeping the economy Exactly. Going. So how are we solving everyday life issues that these people face? Another thing is information. Mm -hmm. These things are there. There's even a platform um, that comes with Pebec that, would, that should enable you complain about any MDA or parastatal. Mm -hmm that isn't doing their work. Now, if you go on that platform, CAC had 55 complaints, and you and I would say knows that. That it's is that is in one hour. So how do people get to know their rights? How do they get to know mm -hmm. the things available to them? Is the government doing enough to inform the people of all the things that it's doing uh, for them? So mm -hmm. it's a lot of mm -hmm. things to talk about, really. I you mean, know, you've, you've you know? captured the Yeah, I was going to say that um, I attended one event, and you know, part of what they found out Businesses that had turnover of millions, they had zero documentation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, so they were now wondering, so if you are going to take your business to the next level, because we know that entrepreneurs are the drivers of every economy. Mm -hmm. If you want to grow this economy, you must make it easy for entrepreneurs to thrive. Mm -hmm. You know, so if as simple as registration documentation, you know, is so difficult for some businesses to, to mm -hmm. get, then how 
I mean, are we playing lip service when we say that, oh, Nigeria is trying to make the economy easy for, for us to do mm -hmm. business? What, what do you so think? again, I think as well, and, and that baffles me a lot of the time, but again, this is where I say, how, what is our approach? Mm -hmm. It's fantastic for us to sit here and say there's no structure, register your business and all of that, but at what point are we going to realize that the psyche of the average Nigerian businessman is different? So our approach should be different. Now, we have 90-something percent of businesses who are not registered. We can't keep doing BAU that says it's CAC, it's this. We have to accept that, you know what, we have entrepreneurs in this country. We have people who have ideas. We have people who are searching up businesses. What is the approach that we can take, mm -hmm. different from whatever else is there, that works for these people? Mm. Because if you tell an average businessman today that if you can do X, Y, Z things, you'll be able to grow your business this way, you'll be able to access the finance, they will do it. I, I would be surprised to see someone who would say, you know what, I, I'm not going to do it, I'm just going to keep hustling. Mm. So the reality of it is, it for me feels like we need to go back to the drawing board. Yes, you need to register your business, but do we need it to be that cumbersome at certain levels? Do we want to take businesses through a journey of when you start at the very basic have this just the same way we've tried to do, go cashless and we've done it over time mm -hmm. it takes education it takes time and it's a process mm -hmm. but when you just keep saying oh we've made this existing process and we've made it easier but have you actually assessed to see if that whether process that process is, is even, even ideal yeah. and working because you might tell me that look i've made it easier for you to submit five documents what if i only will only ever have two mm -hmm. so how is it that documentation and it's not stopping people from being successful like you said people mm -hmm. are making millions mm -hmm. tons of mm -hmm. money and we are losing so what happens is the few businesses that have either a physical location or are registered you tighten the noose you tax tax again tax the tax <laughs> exactly <laughs> yet you have a huge pool of people, people that you that could you get can, income exactly. from if you just had a different approach it's right? like punishing the people that are yeah. in line yes yeah. And you know, when we are talking about businesses, Nigeria is the most, you know, it, it is a big um, economy, right? It has the potential to grow amazingly oh, well. Where exactly. do you well? But, for, but for it, most companies, we're the dream. You we're understand? retail, we're we young. We have everything. We have the, I mean, so why dream? would we, you know, now, you know, stifle ourselves mm. by making it difficult for businesses to understand? So maybe, maybe, yeah, you yeah, want to quickly no, say, let me bring in I'm just going to say that guests. you're totally right because... If you take away the 85 percent of people that SMEs are employing, including themselves, yeah, then you will see that we're going to be in big trouble. Big trouble, my dear, big trouble. All right, so let's bring in our guest. Ayokunu Ojeni is the project manager, enabling business environment secretariat, and he has joined us live from Abuja. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Ayokunu. Good evening, and I'm so glad to be here with you today. All right, so you've been, you've been hearing our lamentation. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I want to ask a question. In your assessment, you know, that you're working with um, Pebek, I, I believe, uh, in your assessment, what do you think are the things that impede the ease of doing business in Nigeria? What are the, those factors that you have assessed to say, okay, these are the challenges that we are trying to tackle? Well, thank you very much. Um, let me say that in July 2016, when the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council was established, it is, um, it is because government understands and recognizes that there are actually constraints to doing business in Nigeria and that something needed to be done about it. So it's not, um, it's not for want of knowing that there are challenges. It's, it is that now that we have identified their challenges, what can we do to make things better? So one of the things that you would have is that you often have, I mean, broadly speaking, you have the soft infrastructure problems and you have the hard infrastructure problems. So the hard infrastructure issues you would have is the infrastructure, road network, those things that will make it easy for you to move the farm produce from where it is planted to the city where it's going to be consumed or even just services, basically. So that infrastructure is, uh, and, uh, is, a, is a major challenge. Then you have the soft infrastructure in terms of clarity um, of the procedures, the costs, the fees that you need to pay when you're even engaging with the regulator. How is it for you to have that information readily available? Uh, is there some clarity in it? Do I know the process that I, that, that I require to get this certain license um, from the government? Mm. 
So that clarity, the transparency, the efficiency is also part of the issues. And that comes under the soft infrastructure. So there are a myriad of issues um, to actually talk about. So, uh, But I think, broadly speaking, the soft infrastructure, those things you really can't see in terms of the, the how, how, how easy is it for you to do business, the time, the cost, the efficiency aspect, and of course, the infrastructure problems, broadband, power, uh, road network that we are all aware of. Okay. <laughs> if you were going to put priority on where we are right now in Nigeria, do you think the easiest win for us would be to tackle? Because I believe if we were tackling it one after the other, not doing so many things at the same time, maybe we would have gotten some form of headway. Do you think, because you mentioned soft and hard um, um, problems, do you think we should focus right now on the soft problems or we should focus on the, if you were to put priority, which would be your easiest pick? Okay, given for instance, everybody, the government is saying everybody should go back to farming. What would be the easiest thing to do for farmers to make it easy for them to do their business? So frankly speaking, um, there's need for prioritization, but you also need to take two tracks. So you've got to do your soft infrastructure because there are some quick wins you can get from that aspect. For example, uh, clarity, adding on the, on the website of the agency, the procedures, making sure that it costs structure is harmonized to make it easier for people to pay their taxes, for example. So those those things, they are one track. And on that that soft infrastructure, the number of things that you can focus on and you can do your prioritization along that track. But the other track is also the ad infrastructure because if you have some clarity in that process and you don't have the road to move the farm produce uh, to the to the urban center, then it's going to be a problem. But under that um, ad infrastructure, there are things for you to prioritize. Should you focus on ad on broadband in infrastructure, broadband network, or do you want to focus on rural road, or do you want to focus on city roads? So there's prioritization on that on that, ang on that angle. So what I would say is that you need to follow those two broad tracks, but under each of those tracks, you can now do your prioritization. Okay. okay, so I was going through your website today and I found that one of your focus um, areas is to create access to finance and you know <laughs> i don't know why i was laughing but it's to create access to finance and i know that um the national collateral registry was um put in place for movable assets so like if i have gold yeah. i can use it and borrow but how how have you been able or have you been able to implement that have you been able to get the lenders to accept that as a form of collateral, seeing that um, collateral is one of the main issues why SMEs cannot borrow in this country today. So I kind of know it's always a journey. Um, you give that to a child today, but you have to allow the child to go through the teeth and face and all of that. So it's a journey. But what I can tell you that in 2017, the legislative framework was established. Two main laws were passed. You have this, the collateral, um, the law establishing, formalizing the collateral registry process, and you also have the uh, water so the legal instrument for for the operation of credit bureaus and credit reporting acts. Uh, that's that specific law. So that legislation has been in place, and that's firstly because if you don't have that legislation in place, you really can't do these lofty things that you have identified. So that's one track. The second thing is that once that law was in place, then we can now go into the operationalization of the national collateral. That also took some time. Now that that is done, you also now need to get the lenders, um, the, the lenders to actually uh, file a list of um, the lenders and the borrowers to also list the, those assets on the collateral registry. And I can tell you that up until now, they are about over the last, at the last check, 700 billion assets worth 700 billion naira. Mm have been listed on the collateral registry, right? So it's a process, and, and I'm glad that we moved from zero to 700 billion uh, now worth of assets in, in less than three years. So I think that's committed, but there's a lot more to be done, but we must understand that we just started the process and it would take some time for us to find this reform uh, deepened in the Nigerian society. Okay, so... Um I, I want to first of all say, I think that in looking at the websites and the amount of information that is out there for parastatals uh, and different programs by the government, I must commend your office because awesome. there is a lot of information um, that you're putting out there and quite um, easy to understand um, in reporting. And it's clear in terms of the work that you're doing. But what I would like to sort of 
ask is that in terms of the engagement, so when you talked about prioritization, I would like to understand a bit more how we prioritize um, the chosen areas that you're focusing on um, in your office. Because you look right now at the types of issues that small businesses are facing. And I believe there's a huge information gap. So I, for instance, just tried to sort out a company registration. And I was asking the most basic of questions that even as the questions were coming out of my mouth, I thought, why do you have to ask a human being? Why can't you find this information somewhere? But I'm also mindful that I'm, I'm also um, enlightened is what the word I want to use, but it's not. <laughs> I, I understand the way the technology works and I can go and find this information probably on the internet. But a lot of people fall into that space where they don't actually understand technology or they don't know where to look. So how do you prioritize and how do we create that engagement with people who are looking for information? Because it's great work that you do, but a lot of it is actually lost in translation. Thank you. It's, it's actually a big, big issue. And, and I think this is one thing in government that um, we appreciate and understand that we need to speak a lot more and engage the people and also speak in a way that people would understand. So, so there's a major challenge with that. And I'm glad that you provided opportunity for me to be here with you today. So that's one step um, um, in resolving this problem. And again, there's also a funding challenge. For, for example, uh, if you want to do on the a massive campaign, it will cost money. But that's not to say, that's not to give it an excuse, but say that we recognize that as a challenge. And, I'm, um, and I believe that we would start taking steps um, at the end of last year, we actually did a brand nationwide campaign uh, moving across five states across for, um, in six weeks from the southwest to the north central, um, um, south south, just engaging people and speaking more to people. But there's a lot we need to do. We have a very large country, a very big country, and you need to explore different ways of reaching people. Some it would be by radio, some it would be by television, some it would be social media. So getting a hang of that um, was a bit challenging, but 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 well, we are not where it used to be, and I believe that in the coming weeks we would accelerate um, that process. Okay, so I'm just going to do a follow-up question to what Uti asked, and I want to ask: Do you work with um, conglomerates of SMEs, so organizations that have or gather SMEs? Do you work with them? Because I see that it is one way that you can preach your gospel. So I understand issues around budget, um, going to the media houses. But do you work with identified parties or identified SME aggregators to ensure that this message or this information it's is passed? Is passed? Hmm. Well, I mean, um, yes, we do, but we have certainly not engaged everybody. And I'll be glad that we engage um, your office, for example, because I know that you, you reach out to some, um, uh, you, have, you have a network of SMEs that we'll be glad to, to, to engage with. Of course, they established one, the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. We had some engagement with Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry last week. So it, it, it's a broad group, um, agro-business group. So it's, it's a large swath. Um, National Association of um, MSMEs have had series of presentation with that body. Uh, pharmaceutical pharmaceutical um, group under the man. So it, it's, a, it's, it's an ongoing and a live discussion that must uh, be kept alive. Uh, so we'll be glad to engage a lot more. Um, sometimes it's difficult to have that proper um, aggregation um, because sometimes they overlap. Sometimes it's just difficult to reach. Sometimes we just don't know them because it's not easy for you to go somewhere online. I really find all those groups. But as many as we know, we are more than willing to engage them and we were glad to, to keep that conversation alive. All right, so, because um, I'm very curious as to how, um, for me, I believe in targeted approach when it comes to solving my problem. You know, don't think you know my problem. So I would like to actually know how you're able to engage the business owners, you know, to say, okay, what exactly are the problems and we want to solve it based on the feedback we're getting. But we're going to go on a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.